In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Begin by reading Titus chapter 3, verses 8 to 15, then Luke chapter 8, verses 5 to 15. Well, there are lots of things that we might think of doing in order to have a truly spiritual life. And there are lots of things that people get really excited about and they start doing. And they often tell everybody else about what it is they're up to. Things like reading the scriptures, obvious, isn't it? We need to do that. Like prayer and fasting and almsgiving and services and going to confession. Maybe pilgrimage and something that people really like doing is reading the lives of the saints, studying theology, uh, coming to me and saying, Father, I've read the five volumes of the Philokalia, uh, that sort of stuff. Or going on pilgrimage, um, buying icons, prayer ropes, drinking holy water, having big, big, big icon corners, the bigger the better, buying more and more expensive icons maybe. All of these things are not bad. They're absolutely wonderful. And sometimes people then let other people know what sort of super duper orthodox Christians they are. And it's usually in that order, what super people they are, what super orthodox people they are, and then Christians as well, in that order. <laughs> Not a good idea. Something else is needed, and both the Lord in Luke today and St. Paul writing to Titus tells us what it is. It's simple, it's obvious, it's tedious, it might even be boring. It's not something will, that will light up your name in the stars with fairy lights. Probably no one will notice, and in fact nobody should notice. But it is absolutely essential for the spiritual life, for the next step or two forward. Often people take on big things that are too great for them. They think they're going to be praying like mad using their brand new Pomboschini, the one they bought the day after their baptism, and now this is day three. And they're going to really get on with that and wear down their fingernails, counting off the beads. Uh, <laughs> or they're going to wear out loads of knees on their trousers by doing hundreds, sometimes thousands of prostrations or they'll get sore lips kissing all the icons in their icon corner but these things are not actually really drawing us forward they're there and they bounce out of our life in the holy spirit but there's something really important we must do and that is applying ourselves to good deeds Simple, isn't it? Apply ourselves to good deeds. St. Paul says it. He says, you know, he, he could have said so many things. He says, concentrate on this. Apply yourself to do good deeds. If you want to be like God, then behave like God. You know what? The Lord doesn't do any prostrations. What he does do is apply himself to good deeds. He went about doing good. He went about as an act of love. He is himself, as it were, an act of love. He is love itself. And that love spills out into doing good deeds. You can say about God that God is love. You can say about the way that God acts, that everything God does is actually an act of love. And sometimes that love really, really is dangerous. Just look at the cross. So if you want to be like God, who shows kindness and love and whose every action is a good deed, then you too must apply yourself to good deeds. Notice you have to do something and that doing is for somebody else, not for you. When you're praying, that's often for you. When you're doing prostrations, that's for your soul. When you are reading the scriptures, that's for you. When you're reading about the church fathers, that's for you. When you are um, reading about the saints, that's for you. 
when you are um, reading theology, that's for you. But when you do good deeds, that you do for other people. So in today's parable, the Lord also refers to this. We come across people who hear the gospel. Some of them it's lost immediately. Bang, and it's gone. Okay, all that sowing of seed and so on. Some of it's lost immediately. It falls where there's nothing, never going to grow. And the birds come along, they eat it. The gospel just disappears. They're not interested. They have their own particular thing. They're hardened. Others, they start growing, but actually they never come to the point of nourishing and watering their faith. Never at all. And it doesn't dig deep. The roots don't go down into Christ. They probably get as far as buying themselves some pretty icons, an Orthodox study Bible and a gomboschini, which they hang on their bedpost. And that is as far as it goes. After that, they go to Marbella or they go to Costa Rica or somewhere for a nice holiday. And if asked, they'll say, oh yes, I'm Orthodox. Oh yes, I'm a Christian. But actually, it's, it's gone. It's died. Then there are others, says the Lord, who they, they accept it all and they get on with it. But then, bit by bit by bit, other things get in the way. And, or even, you know, some things that seem to be spiritual get in the way. They're constantly going on pilgrimages. They're constantly saying their prayers. They're constantly looking up more and more delightful recipes that are fasting. Ooh, look at this, we can eat this now. And these cares of the world, taking the kids horse riding, taking them swimming, going off on holiday, polishing the car, these things bit by bit by bit with their careers and their family commitments and all those other things gradually mean their faith is strangled. Strangled by a study of theology. And you know what? Anybody who's been to a seminary or theological college will have seen people's faith die. It just dies away. And they maintain the shell of Christianity without anything inside that shell. So, these ones probably told everybody how wonderful it was to come to church, how wonderful and spiritual experience it was. And they're looking for a great spiritual experience. But that spiritual experience is actually not forged there. It's not forged in the equivalent of the ice cream. Okay? The spiritual experience is forged in mundane things like, you know, if you think about the food and the bread, the potatoes, the carrots. It's not in the ice cream and the peach melba of spiritual, spiritual things. That comes of its own, unexpectedly, as a surprise. You suddenly discover you've got a dessert and there it is. No, no, no. What you need to do is this. You need to root yourself in Christ, not have those earthly cares, dig down deep, really nourish your faith, and then what you must do is really attend to doing good deeds. Those who remain those who have patience, those who are rooted in Christ, those who clear away the temptations, those who mature quietly in the faith, those who give themselves to good deeds, those who are filled with the Spirit, they're the ones that produce that fine harvest that the Lord talks about, the good and honest heart. So you too, now it's your turn to go and do good deeds and put forth fruit in patience. And that brings its own joy, but it's a quiet joy.
your prayers. God bless you. Amen.